Dear friends, today I would like to discuss about the autonomic dysfunction, uh, the various tests that are done to test for the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system activity and the various tests that show that the patient is having autonomic dysfunction. So first, here in the chart, it has been simplified in the board, so I will be talking one by one. So in there are the parasympathetic test and the sympathetic test. So parasympathetic test is basically is related to the heart rate and sympathetic test is basically related to the blood pressure. So in the parasympathetic test, there are three different tests. One is the standing response to heart rate. The next is the deep breathing test and third is the Valsalva maneuver. So in the standing response to heart rate, we know that when we stand from sitting position, there is an increase in heart rate in the 15th bit. So there is tachycardia in the 15th bit and there is bradycardia in the 30th bit. So now we take the ratio of RA interval. So in bradycardia the RA interval is high. So we take the 30s to 15th ratio. The normal is more than 1.04 and borderline is 1.01 .01 to 1.03 and abnormal is less than 1.01. .01. Next test is deep breathing test. So in this test we ask the patient to take 6 breaths quiet and deep for one minute and we take the heart rate variability so normally the patient should have uh, the heart rate variability of more than 15 beats per minute but those who have autonomic dysfunction they have uh, heart rate variability less than 10 beats per minute the third test we'll discuss is valsalva maneuver so valsalva maneuver here the both components of system, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system are present so here the patient he expires uh, against fixed resistance of 40 mmHg for 15 seconds. So in the first phase, uh, there is transient increase in blood pressure and decrease in heart rate due to compression of the aorta and propulsion of blood into the peripheral circulation. So as he expires, there is transient increase in BP and decrease in heart rate. In phase 2, there is a recovery of blood pressure and now there is increase in heart rate. In phase 3, now as the expiration is stopped, there is decrease in blood pressure and increase in heart rate. And in the phase 4, now after all, there is uh, due to vasoconstriction, there is overshoot of BP and reflex bradycardia. So this is also, uh, the calculation is done by a ratio similar to the standing test. Here the R interval at phase 4, uh, where there is the reflex brady is taken with the R interval during the procedure. So normal is more than 1.2 and abnormal is less than 1.2. So these are the tests for the parasympathetic. As you know the Valsalva is also done for the similar for the sympathetic nervous system. And the next test is standing. So here the orthostatic hypertension is defined. So here the systolic blood pressure of more than 30 mmHg and diastolic blood pressure more than 10 mmHg fall after standing from supine position. So in normally this mechanism is compensated in our body. So normal there is uh, less than 10 mmHg fall in uh, systolic blood pressure and the borderline is 11 to 29. Uh, so if there is more than 30 then it is significant. Next is the sustained hand grip test. So during the sustained hand grip what it does is that it causes increase in cardiac output and heart rate. So there is increase in blood pressure. So particularly the diastolic blood pressure is taken. So more than 16 millimeter mercury diastolic blood pressure increase is normal whereas 10 millimeter mercury less than 10 millimeter mercury is abnormal. So these are the various tests to test for the autonomic dysfunction. For various conditions, uh, most common conditions are uh, like uh, diabetes mellitus uh, and other conditions uh, which involve the different autonomic nervous system. Thank you.